So let's start with the first threat that we have here. And that's going to be undeliverable or invalid email address. So there's many causes for something like this. It could be misspelled. It could be missing an at sign, a dot com, uh, anything with data handling. So if you're ingesting a large email list, part of it could have been cut off in the process. Uh, and then my favorite category is nonsense typing. Um, if you have a point of sale system that is not quite up to date, if someone is say like at Macy's signing up for a sale or signing up for some email list, they might just put garbage in when they're typing it and it's going to be most likely an invalid or undeliverable email address that bounces. Now, fortunately for these kind of email addresses, these are pretty easy to ID and scrub out. So we rely on you know, our 20 years of experience working with our ESP reporting network, doing real-time SMTP checks, uh, to address the validation of these emails and then eventually deploying email potentially if it can be, if we had to make those corrections. Now, I think what is really more kind of the, the scarier side of uh, email lists and something that we keep track of in email hygiene are the deliverable ones. So I'm gonna go through a couple of different categories for deliverable that we have to keep an eye on. So the first one is deliverable, but uh, typo. So, this one seems, uh, this one happens usually by accident. So in this example, you see, you know, acbliss at htmail.com instead of hotmail.com. So common error to either in this type, forget a letter, uh, the domain name. So something like this, there are an alarming number of typo domains that actually pass email validation. And those need to be weeded out. I think kind of the, the scarier aspect of this particular example um, at least for Hotmail or other popular domains, is that there are certain spam traps that specifically target popular domains, and they try to register something that's like htmail.com with a certain handle uh, and pass that off as a spam trap. And those are things that, you know, if you're looking at that, you may not necessarily know or it might fly through. And so we'll talk a little bit more about spam traps in a second, but those typos can be very costly if you don't catch them. So let's go to the next category. So we have deliverable but bogus. So most of these email addresses, are, they're gonna be worthless to you, uh, but they may pass simple validation. So something like AAA at email.com or bill at Microsoft.com. You've probably seen many of these. I, I myself, I think within the past month, have received one from Amazon, or at least it looks like it was from Amazon. It has the logo, it had, a, oh, your credit card information changed or your email address is updated, click here to, uh, to address it or to do whatever you need to do, a call to action. Uh, but if you actually look at the email address, it has Amazon in it, but it also has a bunch of letters and numbers. So these bogus email addresses, yes, they can be deliverable, but they're worthless to you and they need to be identified so you don't send it out to them. All right, so that's, Focused and the next category is also, I think, a quick one, and a lot of us are familiar with this, is deliverable but disposable. So users, if they're signing up for a website, they're trying to get a free trial, uh, you'll see this used quite a bit. There are many websites where you can sign up and get a disposable email address that you use to sign up for these one-time services. Uh, fortunately, Fresh Address, we track thousands of these domains. We put this in our catalog. We catch these and we notify you uh, for part of our services if they're there. That way you can not send to them. But this is pretty common and something that we always keep a constant eye out for uh, and something that you should as well, because uh, it is pretty common depending on the industry, uh, if these are gonna be used or not. All right, next one, I think everyone is also very familiar with these. They've seen these, uh, get these emails a lot within their company, potentially. So there's no doubt that the role counts, they can create problems if they're managed improperly, but that doesn't mean you necessarily want to block them. It really kind of just depends on two key factors. What's the goal of your messaging and what's your relationship with the subscriber? It's unlikely you want to market to this role account, but you may actually want to have a transaction with them. So that's why for part of our services for Fresh Address, we allow clients to allow specific role accounts. So if you happen to know a billing at email address that is valid and you want that particular role account to get it, you can mark that exception with us and we'll make sure that we allow it. Otherwise, the role accounts will be marked and you'll be aware of that so you're not sending it out to them when you really don't need to. 
All right. I would say the, the heavy hitter of the deliverable list is spam traps. So these are deliverable email addresses used to ID spammers. So a lot of these can look innocent. Um, this list makes me laugh because I would say the, if I'm doing a manual review of an email list and I'm looking at bullets one and three, at least to my eyes, those would be questionable. At least the third one I would remove entirely. But if I was looking at the second one, that's something that I probably wouldn't necessarily catch, nor would I remove it if I was manually looking at it myself. Um, so spam traps can be dangerous. If you send one spam trap to an influential provider or sent to, it could reduce your inbox placement rates by 40% or more. So just one getting through can be detrimental to your campaign. So for spam traps, there's a variety of ways they could be introduced into your list and just come into creation themselves. So for starters, some spam traps are just new email addresses that are created solely for the purpose of being a spam trap. And you'll see some of these spam traps, or I don't know if you would see them, but they are commonly hidden in websites, basically waiting to be harvested, harvested or scraped uh, using different software. So some people, uh, if they're using methods they really shouldn't to acquire email addresses, uh, will scrape different websites to gather as much data, as much email addresses as they can. Most likely, they're going to be getting a, a decent amount of spam traps, which could tank your campaign. And I think the other one I always I always have to remind myself and keep in mind is that there are recycled uh, email addresses that become spam traps. So I think a lot of people forget about this. You know, formal email addresses of a real person that became abandoned. Now, if someone had an email account a long time ago, say 10 years, it could have been valid. Maybe it was then quarantined for a year and it bounced, so it was undeliverable. That ISP could have turned around and flipped that email address back on and changed it into a spam trap. So that's why constant email hygiene is very important because you truly don't know how your list is aged and it's certainly not going to be perfect uh, month over month. So constant vigilance and monitoring your list hygiene is very important. So bottom line, I think it's pretty clear, but you know, it's not just undeliverable email addresses that pose a threat to your list. It's the deliverable but problematic, the deliverable but toxic. That's what Fresh Address is exceptionally good at. It's identifying these different categories and letting you know, you know, what is a type of, what is a bogus email disposable, what are role accounts, and also, you know, what are the spam traps you have in your list? But, you know, it's not just about identification of these problems. It's, you know, identifying the next step. So that's really comes down to how did these bad addresses get on your list? It was either through maybe acquisitions, good addresses going bad, or poor list management. So let's look at the first category, acquisition. So there's point of sale systems, there's websites, there's call centers. I think everyone has heard of these. And these are just very popular methods for email addresses to get into your campaign, to get into your email list. But depending on what they're using, if they're out of date, the design itself, you could be getting bad email addresses. So, you know, for an example, some website, well, I'm sorry, excuse me, some website forms don't accept a, a, the enough amount of characters for an email address. So if you have a longer name and you have a longer email address, the website might be cutting that off in its collection and therefore it's giving you a bad and valid or, or potentially a deliverable but bad email address. And that's something that you need to catch. Same thing with a point of sale system. If someone is you know, either the cashier or the customer themselves, they're typing in their email very quickly. And if there's no validation built into that, there could be misspellings. There could be, you know, people aren't quick enough to put that in. They may not care. Or, you know, if you're the cashier, you have to deal with plenty of other customers. So that's something that could slip right on by and you have a bad email list, email on your list. Now, another one we've talked about, and I think we've gone over this quite a bit, is good addresses go bad. So I won't spend too much time on this, but you know, in the summer, you could have a good email address, but by the time December rolls around, you know, you've been blacklisted because that email was actually, a, it changed to a spam trap, and now your inbox placement took a hit and you're down by 40%. So just one spam trap can cripple your campaign, so this is something you've got to constantly be vigilant about uh, and be aware of. Otherwise, it's going to happen. 
And that really kind of dives into the final category here is poor list management. So really, I would say the common mistakes that are going to occur, if you have old acquisition practices, previous marketers, you know, if you just did something differently, you got lists maybe a way that you shouldn't, or someone did something, you know, you have old, these old emails and you need to clean them. Otherwise, you have no idea where they came from or how good they are. Uh, and then I think really what it comes down to is a long period of time without emailing, no routine list hygiene. I think I hammered this enough, but at the same time, it's so important that these email addresses can go bad. You have no idea. You have to make sure that you have a routine list hygiene running at all times to make sure you have the cleanest list, the cleanest campaign possible. Otherwise, it could cost you your inbox placement. 